Okay, everybody, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to do a little bit of a diversion. Um, it seemed like not everybody was ready to start dealing with square roots like I thought maybe you would be. And the fact that I'm we're not like in a classroom environment seems to only be making it more difficult. So uh, we're going to take a little bit of a diversion. So this technically isn't necessarily part of Unit 7. It's more of just like a, a review of some stuff that you would have covered last year in Algebra 1, which I'm sure... Maybe some of you remember, but I'm sure most of you probably have forgotten how to do this unless you're already taking Algebra 2. Those of you who are taking Algebra 2 seem to be just fine with what we're covering, but that's not everybody. So uh, we're going to do a little bit of a diversion today. We're going to talk about simplifying radicals. So a radical, if you don't remember from Algebra 1, is just another word for a square root. Um, these are going to show up a lot in the next couple lessons because we're dealing with right triangles, which means we're going to be dealing with the Pythagorean theorem, which means that we need to remember how to simplify a radical. So uh, let's take a look at how to do that. Now, if it's a simple radical, uh, something that you can easily do on your calculator, like let's say square root of 64. Hard for me to <laughs> draw with my mouse here. Uh, square root of 64. Now that has a really, really nice, simple square root. We know that that's going to be 8. But if it's something that isn't a nice square root like that, like say the square root of 12 or the square root of 8, um, if you enter that into your calculator, you're going to get this super nasty decimal that's going to take up the entire screen. And that's not considered appropriate uh, according to math. So we're going to talk about what would be an appropriate answer for that. So let's start with that one. So the square root of 64 is just plain 8. Let's look at the square root of 12. All right. So here's how you simplify radicals. I don't know how you would have been taught by your Algebra 1 teacher, so I'm going to teach you my way. Um, and if this doesn't make sense, I'll teach you the way that uh, Algebra teachers usually cover it as well, just to make sure that you're getting every possible version of it. So. Uh, here's how I do it. So square root of 12, the first thing that you want to do is break down 12 into a factor tree. So I want to break it down until I find prime factors. So 12 can be uh, 12 can be 2 times 6. Now you don't have to do the same factor tree that I'm doing here. 2 is a prime number, meaning I, if I break it down, it's going to break down into 1 times 2. And I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to underline it because it's prime. Let's do that now. Now 6 is not prime. 6 can break down into 2 times 3. And I'm going to underline both of those because they're both prime. Now the function of a square root is for every pair of prime factors, one of those numbers can come outside the radical. And anything that doesn't have a pair has to stay inside the radical. Uh, there's a I, Sometimes I call it the house. So we've got the house is the radical. Now, in this case, we can bring a2 out because we have a pair of 2s here. That's the function of a square root, is it undoes pairs of prime factors. So I have two 2s, so I can put one 2 on the outside. Now, there's no pair for the 3, so the 3 has to stay inside the house. So the square root of 12, as a simplified radical, is 2 radical 3. Now, um, Part of the delta math assignment that I, I know caused some people some consternation was simplifying radicals. And simplifying radicals means doing exactly this. So let's look at another example here. Uh, let's look at, let's do the square root of, um, let's do 75. Okay, now you could do a different separation than this. Just like up here, if I had instead done 4 and 3, and then 4 breaks into 2 and 2, I'd still have one pair of 2s and one 3 for inside. You could do a different separation of this than the one that I'm doing and still get the same answer. So I'm going to break 75 up into, uh, let's do 25 and 3. So 3 is prime, so I'm going to underline it. 25 is not. Just because a number is odd doesn't make it prime. 25 is going to break down into 5 times 5. So 5 is prime and 5 is prime. So again, I have a pair of prime factors here. So I'm going to cross out two of them to put one outside the house. And then there's no pair for the 3, so 3 stays inside the house. Okay. 
let's take a look at how this is going to look in the Delta Math assignment for today. All right, so today's Delta Math assignment is really, really short. All you have to do is simplify some radicals. So in this example, we have the square root of 63. So to simplify this, I'm going to break it down into a factor tree. So 63 is the same thing as 9 times 7, I think. Yep, 9 times 7. 7 is prime, but 9 isn't. 9 breaks down into 3 times 3. Both of those are prime. Now there's a pair of 3's, so 1 3 can come outside the house, and 7 has to stay inside the house. So when I'm typing this in here, I'm going to type it in as 3 square root 7. All right, let's look at another one here. Uh, let me erase from the last one. Yoda, come on. Uh, all right, so square root of 150, I have to simplify this. So I'm going to break 150 down. Um, let's see, I'm going to do 15 and 10. You could do something else, and it would work so long as you're being cautious. So 15 and 10. 15 breaks into 5, which is prime, times 3, which is prime. 10 breaks down into 2, which is prime, times 5, which is prime. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I have a pair of 5s. So 1, 5 can come outside. I don't have a pair of 3s, and I don't have a pair of 2s, which means that they have to stay inside. And when two numbers stay inside, they multiply together. So this is 5, and then inside it's 3 times 2. So that means it's 5 square root 6. So... That's what the answer is going to be. 5 square root 6. Okay. All right. So you have five that you have to do from here. So today's assignment on Google Classroom is to take notes on this video we just did. And then once you've taken notes on the video, pop over to Delta Math and you have five of these problems to do. Tomorrow you'll have another assignment, which will be some of this and then also some review from way back at the beginning of the school year. Um, we're going to try this. This is maybe a little easier to digest than what I was trying to do earlier in the week. We'll see how it goes. Uh, if you need some help, um, then feel free to email me. We can go over it together. Uh, yeah, otherwise, have yourselves a wonderful day.